Hallelujah. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad. Are you glad this morning? Are you glad this hour? To come into the house of God. Right there where you're seated, make it to heaven. Make it God's house as we go to God in prayer. And come joyfully into his presence. That we all will be blessed as we do. And so, gracious Lord, another opportunity has been given to us to come to your presence. We ask, Lord, that as we come to your presence, you will bless us and you will change us and make of us that which your eternal purpose and desire is of us. In Jesus Christ, we are prayed. Amen. I will be speaking briefly on the subject I have titled Band Wagon Effect. Band wagon effect. Resist the band wagon effect. What is band wagon effect? A band wagon effect is an effect that is a phenomenon that happens due to possibly a general acceptance of a situation, a dance style, an attitude, a statement. A pattern that is widely accepted, irrespective of the fact whether that thing is right or wrong. And because it is widely accepted by the generality of the people, people just flew along. That effect brought about by the general acceptance of that phenomenon that have caused people to just plunge into it is the bandwagon effect of it. And most times, the effect has an end uh, influence on some aspects of individual lives. That's why I want to talk about resisting the bandwagon effect. We live in a time, in a, in a season when there is so much influence on people. Occasioned by general acceptance of some norms, of some things, some attitudes, some principles, negative principles most times. And people just say, now so would they do? Now so it be. Now you start them. Can you change it? That is what it is. So I have told you, you better do it or you remain on your own. You will lose all the effect. And oftentimes people find themselves jeopardizing their faith or lowering their standards that all through life they have believed on because of that influence of the bandwagon. I'd like us to read Exodus chapter 23, verse 2. Verse 2a specifically. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. We can follow a multitude to do good. That's a good positive bandwagon effect. But when we follow a multitude to do evil, it becomes a negative bandwagon effect. And that is the one we should resist. Oftentimes, it comes from peer pressure for the younger ones. And do you know that peer pressure now is not only on younger ones? Even at later stages of life, when you get into different levels in the professional field, there is even a bandwagon effect amongst managers, amongst contemporaries, among professional colleagues. There is bandwagon effect. This is the trend now if you don't do it like that. But I'd like you to check. If that trend contravenes the principles of scripture or what you believe to be the right thing, I'd like you to check it. Let us not follow the multitude to do evil. It doesn't matter who is involved. Sometimes not cotoing or playing along the bandwagon effect could bring some temporal difficult situations our path. Yes. Because 
We live in a world that is sold out to the devil. And we are not of this world, even of this. We even though we are of this world. So it's like you're going against the tide. But God has said his grace is sufficient to us. Not submitting to some bandwagon effects of things around us. May even make us miss some kind of things temporarily. But I thank God that every good and perfect gift comes from God. The scripture is very clear. Do not follow the multitude to sin. So if you're on the campus and this is the trend, ask yourself, does that trend conform with scripture? Does that trend agree with the conviction of God concerning me? Because everybody is doing it does not mean it is right. Voice of the people is the voice of God. Yes, it's a maxim. But, my dear, there could be times when the voice of the people is not the voice of God. The people said to Samuel, to Saul, Hey, this ram, this cow, this sheep, this goat is wonderful. First Samuel chapter 15. And Samuel followed the band were going effect. And he ended up losing his kingdom. He said, they have said that we should bring the best for sacrifice to God. And I obeyed them. And I obeyed them. Rather than obeying God, he obeyed them. And what happened at the end? He lost the kingdom. What is the obedience to which we are yielding ourselves to? The Bible says, you are servants to whatsoever you yield as servants to obey. Let us not follow the multitude to offend God. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 15 says, And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. The people, the people, the king that had an express instruction from God, go to the land of Amalek, wipe all, kill everybody, destroy, and take nothing. The people said. So the voice of the people may not necessarily be the voice of God. And so also it is in the church. So also it is in our workplace that everybody is doing something does not mean that is what God has said. May we please open our ears to hear what the Lord has said. And follow his directions clearly. Not the band wagon effect. There are instances in the scripture aside of Saul where men have listened to men and have died. You see, ironically, the people that, that made Saul follow their statement were not judged. Saul got his judgment. So before you yield yourselves to any effect, any move, anything happening, what is the Lord speaking to you as a person? What has God spoken to you but categorically concerning that situation? Stick to what God has told you. And if you have found yourself following the crowd, moving with the crowd, and doing what is wrong, at any moment that realization comes, stop and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. I retract my step. Many young ones that are from Christian homes have gotten into the high institutions and are lost in the ocean of the world. Because of peer pressure. Many in the bid to seek for job or promotion have done what the world said they should do. And have missed it all. Many professionals. Many academics. Many businessmen. Because this is the way we get contracts. And you follow it. And you end up regretting what you did. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Stick to what God has told you to do. And do not follow the multitude to sin. Philippians chapter 2 
and verse 15 made us understand that God expects of us to be the light of the world. Verse 15 says that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a perverse and a crooked nation, among whom ye shine as light in the world. So we are to carry our own light and shine forth, not to be influenced by the bandwagon. Be sons and daughters of God without rebuke. I pray for myself because I know it is not by mine. I'd like you to ask God for that grace. To appear blameless before him and not follow the multitude to sin. So many people have not given their life to Christ. You might be one of such hearing the sound of my voice because that young boy has not given his life to Christ and he has promised you X, Y, Z and you feel if you give your life to Christ, you're going to miss it. Follow not the multitude to sin. Don't compromise your faith on any guise. Don't dance with the crowd. I, in my life and in my journey of life, I've discovered areas that I have followed bandwagon and I've ended up regretting. So this is just a piece of advice to you and to me. Do not follow the multitude to sin. Even if it means you standing alone, stand alone. Because at the day of judgment, we will be judged alone. But as you do that, let your light shine. They may not listen to you now. They may not see right in what you're doing now. But on the long run, if the bandwagon is moving towards perdition or error, when they fail, they will say, oh, somebody said something. Be like that madman on the Bronx, New York Highway that saw the bridge collapse and was standing under the rain, flagging down every car. It's a broken bridge and they didn't believe. But those that listened to that madman stopped and looked beyond and saw the bridge was broken. Those that called him mad ended up crashing into the sea and dying. You can be the one man, the lone man standing. For one with God, is with majority. One with God is with majority. Stand alone and stand for Christ. Surely they will come after you when they realize that that effect that pulled them was wrong. Many have regretted. Many young girls have lost their wombs, contracted venereal diseases, HIVs and all that by virtue of compromising and following the bandwagon effect. Many MDs, many directors have lost their jobs. Many have lost their businesses because they want to do it the way of the world. The Bible said the world passes away and is lost thereof. But they that stand and know their God shall be strong. There are examples in scripture of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, of Daniel, of many others that stood even when everybody was saying the contrary. And at the end of it, the Lord proved himself. Do not follow the multitude. I beg of you, my friend, my brother, stand at your conviction of the word of God and let everything fail. All men can be liars. Let God be true in your situation. And so let's make it a prayer this moment and say, Lord, grant me the grace today to stand fast in the liberty that Christ has set me free and not be entangled by the yoke of bondage. Lord, grant me the grace to hold fast my profession, my confession. Let not the world influence me to sin, but let me influence the world. Lord, give me the heart of a lion. That no matter what the obstacle is, I will confront it with you. Because with you, I will do valiantly. Make it a prayer at this moment. Say, Lord, I will not follow the multitude to sin. And I know you will not forsake me. Lord, this day, I will walk in the path of righteousness. Though the world be against me, if you are for me, I am not bothered. For if God be for me, who? 
can be against me. That's the consolation you have in scripture. Make it a prayer. Lord, cause me to stand and shine as light in this dark world. And Lord, I pray for everyone that is praying this moment and hearing the sound of my voice. That you will grant us the grace to stand firm, having done all to stand. To stand firm, having done all to stand. Being equipped with the armor of faith. Wherewith we will quench the fiery darts of the enemy. And subdue principalities and powers. Let your grace be available unto us. I pray that I strengthen that with heart. That young man, that young woman that want to compromise. And want to throw in the trouble. Because everything seems to go the other way. Lord, let courage be brought forth. I speak strength to that weak soul. I speak strength to that young woman. That, don't give up. God will speak. There might be darkness all around you, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel. May grace carry you through. And may rivers flood your desert. May highways flood your wilderness. May the Lord cause you to pass through fire and not be burned. May the Lord cause you to pass through hell and high waters and not be drowned. For by grace you shall be saved. Not of works, it's a free gift of God. Thank you, Father, for strengthening that heart. And for doing the impossible in the life of that year at this day. Thank you, Father, for this grace, for we know you've heard our cries. In the excellent name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you.